yeah, I want all of them to advance. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was going to say the only one that I really want to advance is Trigger because it's Me his too. first season. But He's my fave. I, I mean, Jon Snow is now my teammate. You know, like, yeah. Vindict is, is such an awesome kid. Yeah. Uh, he's worked so hard. Yeah. Uh, uh, and yeah, Epic is also my teammate now, and he is he is kind of making a comeback. Yeah. Okay, let's introduce our players and then we'll chat a little bit more. Our first player in the top right of 2K Atmo. He is the Red Zerg player, now representing Psystorm Gaming. It is Jon Snow. John M. Canning. M. Snow. Oh, oh God. <laughs> And, well, here we go. Spawning down in the bottom left, representing Alpha X. It is the Blue Terran player, Vindicta. And, well, I got to say, this is, uh, this is a pretty cool matchup overall. Uh, not just because it is, <clears throat> uh, you know, very important for the group mm. and it's CVT and it's two mm. classic NA players. Uh, John Snow, kind of known as the gatekeeper of NA, as yes. uh, Ruby has dubbed him. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's a very appropriate nickname because he's too. actually like, yeah, he, he has just been consistent for so long. And yeah. if you want to make your name in NA, you have to beat John Snow. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like all the players that really push it, like, if you're better than Jon Snow, you're a top, top tier American, like, or, or North American player. He, yeah. he He's definitely the gatekeeper here, whereas Vindicta is one of those players that has a lot of hype, a lot of promise. He does very, uh, he seems to do very well in a lot of his events, even internationally. He's, he's got some spark, a little bit of a je ne sais quoi, as I would say, um, because I am so well traveled. Now. <laughs> uh, this game going to open up with a Reaper expand from our Terran player and a like hatch gas pool here. Very standard uh, Queens before third from Jon Snow. In terms of stylistically, how do you see these two matching up? Do you see, you know, does Vindicta have a, a, a maybe an advantage in the way he plays? I don't know these guys as well. They're obviously they're more from your region. I don't cast a lot of the EPT weeklies because I um, have school typically on a, on a Monday. Um, so le what, what do you think here stylistically? Break it down for me. Uh, well, Jon Snow actually hasn't played all that much mm. in the ESL Open Cups. Uh, okay. He, I, I think he's another player who take, took a bit of a break. Vindicta, though, very, very aggressive player. Loves yes. getting on the map with as many units as he can. And just microing. Uh, okay. just, just micro the crap out of his units and get the absolute maximum value. And there are even times where he will elect to, you know, cut an SCV for a couple of seconds so that he can get out one or two extra marines mm. or he, you'll you'll see it throughout the uh throughout, it, it doesn't show up as much i think in tvz but in tvp especially i feel like he uh he oftentimes will you'll look at the game and you'll be like nothing's happened but he's down like 16 workers and then he shows up with like a 20 army supply lead and you're like huh okay and then and then he'll like you know kill his opponent with uh two sets of double drops or something like that I think we're going to see a swap over here on the tech lab of Vindicta. I think he's going to drop it onto the starport and, and possibly go for, uh, yeah, he is, um, some sort of uh, Raven, most, uh, sorry, Raven uh, Banshee, most likely. I'm interested if we see Cloak as well. Cloak Banshees yeah, and TVZ we... kind of fallen off a little bit. We don't see a lot of it. So I like to see it like reintroduced here. In Europe specifically, as I said, uh, players don't do it as often now. They're, they're more doing... Um, two one ones or three one ones uh stuff like that open up with more racks to get their pressure in so i, I like to see this especially if the zerg player isn't prepared and there are two banshees if you can keep them alive they're like oracles and that they're a constant constant threat to just dash in and find a bunch of kills um and and with hellions pressuring elsewhere drawing the queens out this is this is a nice opening here for vindictor a little bit of a throwback so i like to see it but as i said i'm very curious if it's just a one one ling uh or sorry was it just a one ling yet yeah, one ling tried to get in it did not see absolutely anything at tool here steadfast roach warren coming down nice and early here from john snow as well uh at 51 workers 49 workers as he throws down uh a couple of gas geysers um and it is going to be that two banshee opening that i saw hinted at uh Ooh, an yeah armory. It's oh it's gonna hellbat be banshee a, an armory coming down with this so it's gonna be hellbat banshee i love this build and uh i i will say that uh there are still some i would say hero marine does go for cloak banshees at least still yeah. a reasonable amount uh someone like clem definitely loves to get like that fast third command center yeah uh you know have have as many you know like three three command center into yeah. uh two one one something like that uh 
but we're going to have to see if these Banshees can get the value that they're looking for when coupled with these Hellbats. Mm. Uh, for now, that one Queen so gave very low. No transfe Okay, there we go. Yeah, getting this energy out early, though, is really, really nice here from the Banshee. It is starting to run out of energy, and now the Hellbats have transformed in, and there's really, there's no Roaches on the field just yet. There are nine on the way, but they need to be here, like, uh, like, like kind of right now. The SC, uh, sorry, the Drones force to be pulled here. A few will go down, but I think the Drone pools end up going to be, uh, going to end up being very important. These Banshees just wailing away on the Queens does mean I think we'll see a few Queens go down here, but my god, those Drones have just saved themselves. I would really love to see him turn those back. Well, now he can't. Now yeah. we can't. He's actually trapped by the roaches. I would have loved to see him turn those back into Hellions and, and run down every single drone. He could have gotten mm. every single one of them because uh, they were they were not going to be saved. There was nothing to save them over here. But instead, he chases he chases the queens instead. Mm. And I think kind of tries to take a, a win off that. But he ends up kind of throwing away a big advantage that he had. Uh, or a big opportunity at the very least. And Jon Snow, while he takes a lot of damage, loses a lot of mining time, doesn't lose... Did he lose even a single drone no, there? He no. lost one drone one. in this game. Yeah, and uh, things like the Queens, they can be remade. Sure, it's 450 minerals to make three at a time, but uh, it's not affecting lava. So there's still plenty of lava to just drone up like crazy behind this. Um, the Queens are, are replaceable. There's still uh, a couple left to keep things like injects going. Uh, creep spread has, of course, been hindered. It's not great. If we were watching Scarlet, it would be, you know, three or four creep deeper right now. Um, but now Roach Speed is on the way. One One is on the way. Our Zerg player, he hasn't got a... Oh, he does have a fourth hatchery as well. Uh, so everything is looking, I think, pretty good here for Jon Snow. He's going to be able to just hold down the DP if he wants and go up into the 80s of drones relatively soon. Going to have to deal with this drop, but it's not a particularly intimidating drop. I think it's like 10 marines. Um, and uh, as soon as Roach Speed finishes, I can't see this doing too much. Well, I um, Jon Snow is actually going to hit a 1-1 Roach timing is what I'm thinking he's oh. going to do. He's going to uh, do that classic oh, yeah, six, right. 66, in this case, 67 yeah. drones. But uh, mm. basically three base, six gas saturation, and build a ton of Roach Ravager mm. and see what he can get done. Scan comes down from Vindicta, wants to see if there's any additional tech, and sees that there's no hive, no... Uh, Infestation uh, no pit. No infestation pit yet. No yeah. hydrogen or yeah. lurkers. Uh, so this is just going to be a big old let me get up to a massive supply and see what I can get done. And the fact that these Banshees are alive is going to help out a lot. But there's only two tanks steadfast. Is that not going to be like slightly disconcerting? We do see the, the Banshees actually going to be able to chase them off. The tanks on the high ground are in a decent spot, although the Ravagers from a distance will be able to work away at that command center. And now we see Queens joining the fray, a sort of semi-Queen walk here. They're going to be able to push down and push back these Banshees, most importantly. This is so many Ravagers being made right now. Ten more. The wall will go down. It will fall. And now we have the Roaches and the Queens just going to be able to march forward towards that third. This drop is nice. Reinforcements actually not in position to deal with this. So it might be able to get maybe an Evo Chamber, a bunch of drones. But, uh, I mean, Vindicta has to hold here. Yeah, but he can't. He's got to lift the command center. Yeah. There is overseers to provide high ground vision. Vindicta is going to gun them down, though, and that means those tanks are safe on the high ground. Great yeah. move. That's a potentially game-saving oh. move, but huge corrosive piles. Those are not supposed to hit your marines. You're supposed to not stand in those, Vindicta. Yeah. That's because he's focused on the drop on the other side of the map. The drop is seemingly t seemingly doing pretty decent, but I feel like as reinforcements trickle in here, it won't be necessarily much of a problem for, for Jon Snow to push this back. Now, the good news is Jon Snow doesn't have a great drone count behind us. He is only at 65, which is relatively low for nine minutes into the game as a Zerg player. He'd much rather be in the late 70s at this point, and that drone count is being thinned out just a little bit more. This drop ended up actually doing a lot of work here for a Terran player and potentially keeping him uh, even in this game. Now, yeah, this is actually a really Ooh, bad two, two situation for uh, Jon Snow all of a sudden. I agree. I agree. Uh, uh, he is trying to go up into Hive behind this. He's going into uh, plus one melee and plus two carapace. So he's just going to transition to uh, Roach, Ravager, Ling, Bane. And just as, as the Roaches dies, he'll just replace them with more efficient supply. But he needs to get something done, done with this. And he does recognize that. Vindicta, though, recognizing that he's got his own 2-2. Two -two. Uh, he wants to wait for 2 2, right? Yeah, so we are going to see. Yeah, yeah the he bio is going to on the way, is what I meant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Two, when 2 2 finishes, this bio can take this fight all day long. Uh, there's medevacs here, there's tanks supporting, and, and uh, yeah, Vindicta definitely uh, trying to wait that extra 15 seconds now so he can get this 2 2 into play and make things happen here. But I am concerned that Jon Snow's tech is going to really, really limit him because uh, his upgrades are. I mean, he has Carapace, sure, but he has that plus one range, which is only going to fall off as the game goes there's no hydras coming in um 
the, the melee upgrades coming in are nice, but they're going to be way further behind. Free Free hasn't started for Vindictor. I'd like to see him start that as soon as he can. He's going to go vehicle weapons first as well, which is nice. Get those tanks really slapping. There we go. That's Free Free. So uh, I... I really like Vindictor's position in this game. I, I feel like he's got a great army. Uh, his medevac count is good. His tank count is is really good at eight. He still has a Banshee alive even. Um, and an Ultralisk cavern. That that could be uh, the Ultralisk plus the um, Cracklings coming in. Could be pretty nice. There's uh, how many Marauders on the field? Uh, an impressive zero. Uh, oh, nice pickup. <laughs> he buys his own overseer. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't have put the camera uh, on that one. Yeah, right. Uh, we we do have a a couple of extra bases coming down as well. Mm. But Vindicta with just a single drop. I normally I like to see like more drops, but on this map, I honestly just a single drop is really nice because the the different distance between the pocket third and the main is like you know nothing to drop, but so long to run. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. These drops are just creating constant, constant pressure. More workers are going to die here. The Ultralist Cavern could be targeted down as well. It doesn't look like before reinforcements get here that that's going to be the target here. But these Marines all get saved. Eight of them go in, eight of them come out. No man left behind. Creepers being put back very well uh, through the center of the map. There is still the slightly more uh, eastern path. That's that's pretty healthy. But uh, these drops, although they're not finding like massive, huge 10 workers, they're slowing down... Uh, Jon Snow. My, I guess my concern is Jon Snow doesn't really mind sitting back right now while he's trying to tech. Ultras are already on the way. Kitan is playing halfway done. Two Ghost Academies coming in. <laughs> Let's go with some nuclear missiles. Oh, I am ready for the nuke game. We had a short set of games on EU. Why not have a, a two and a half hour nuke fest? Sounds good to me. Uh, yeah, well, no, not for me. It's it's 11 p.m. here, um, and we have another series after this. So um, let's 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 not go two hours. I'll go an hour. I could do an hour, uh, maybe <laughs> if the next one is a two rex. Um, okay, big link counter attack coming here. Actually, not going to see too much in the medevac. We'll see some of it, but this is a big committed attack here down the eastern seaboard of uh, Vindicta, and he's not. He's got a lot of tanks spread. This is not a planetary. Actually, he's going to load up the SCVs. Keep. This tank will go down, goodbye. Liberator should be able to push this back. Do we have uh, the Liberator upgrade just yet? No, we need to get that going. And well, Jon Snow, he he wanted those supply, uh, those roaches to be gone from his army. Mm -hmm. He would have liked to have gotten more than a tank and maybe, what, six SCVs for yeah. 25 roaches, 20 yeah. roaches, 16 roaches. Uh, that was a lot of losses. Uh, but he, at the end of the day, like I said, he, he wanted those gone more than anything. Uh, this double drop coming back in, I think it got another... Did it get a kill or a cancel this time? I think it got um, another sure. cancel. Ooh. It was a kill before. And, well, we will see this parasitic bomb coming in here. I don't think this is enough to kill not, either medevac. No. no, it takes them down to Red both House, survive. but they, they survive. That's 11 Marines that all make it safely home to their families here. Ultralisk, though, the number's starting to, to rise more and more. We're going to have six very soon. Uh, and they are getting the anabolic upgrades. Uh, static defense coming down. 11 troop tumors. 16 troop tumors at a time. That's insane. A uh, huge amount of creep being spread right now here by Jon Snow trying to up his game after you heard me call him out earlier. Here we go. There are all the queens. Uh, these drops are very, very vulnerable. Second Spire coming in, so we can get that Greater Spire before too long as well. Hive, of course, at this stage is uh, very, very done. Um, and those melee upgrades are getting closer and closer to completing. And, and if we see three free Ultralisks here, currently they are 2-2 two, two, with Chitinous Plating. There's really, there's a lot of tanks. There's a few Liberators. Uh, only a couple of Marauders, though. They could be difficult to deal with. They're going to force a lot of Micro. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They are very, very difficult to deal with. Oh, the Viper <laughs> Corruptor Force. Not going to be able to get these medevacs. They will boost on out of there. Uh, good scan did clear out a fair number of creep tumors, but not getting all of them. Double scan comes down, wants to see if that greater spire is in production. It is not. And Vindicta does see that, but he also sees that it's double spire. Now, Vindicta, he is really... He is compressed on four bases. He really yeah. needs to take a fifth. Yes. Uh, if we see his gas count, his mineral count, he is struggling to try and max out against an opponent who is... Uh, uh, well, actually, Banking. not on a fantastic economy either. The Johnso's only on 70 drones, mm. and he's had this uh, this base denied a lot of times. Oh, look at this ghost. Yeah, there's currently one nuke completed, two more in production. And, I mean, this ghost is a man on a mission. He's looking. He's scouting. Uh, that's not a fun nuke. 
Uh, first nuclear missile will be launched here uh, in order to uh, kill some creep, kill some static defense. The army is still stacked down here in the southeast. Nuke will land, and that's a lot of dead lava. Yeah, that's Ooh. actually pretty nice. And another nuke going to come down on the right side, also going after a bit of static defense. Yeah. Uh, honestly, killing off larva is really, really good because uh, it's not like Jon Snow has like a 45 or 50 larva bank. He's only on 12 larva. Mm. As, well, it was 15 a moment ago, but that nuke lands and takes out a couple of them. Yeah, I, another I one's going to come down gonna too. It is, yeah. And now the, the drones are going to get hit by this one. There's going to be a few dead drones. Oh, oh, nine. Wow, that's more than I anticipated. That queen is literally just a smoking pile of ash at this point. The other queen's pretty low. There are more and more nukes coming in. They're looking desperately for this ghost, and they can't quite find it. The overseer's actually nowhere near. And now we see snipes coming in onto these ultralists. The tank line is going to stand strong. This is very difficult to push into this many tanks, but with Banelings forcing the micro, this is actually working out quite well, I think, for... Jon Snow, I don't know actually. How did that trade go? Uh, he mm. picked up every single tank, so that was actually pretty good for Jon Snow. Vindicta did kill a lot of his opponent's stuff, mm. but a lot of that was from the nukes. So overall, I think Jon Snow keeping that tank count low is going to be happy, but dealing with uh, ghosts and nukes is actually such so a massive hard. hassle. It, yeah. it is a really, really annoying thing to have to deal with. Yeah, especially like right now that, you know, the creep massively they're they're constantly adding threat to things like the lava as we said but also if you look away at one point you could lose you know at this point in the game there's only one or two active mining bases you could lose an active mining base and that is terrifying uh we do see talking of active mining bases being lost uh this base down here at the west will be dealt with some snipes coming in to try and trade efficiently it's a lot of snipes actually gosh um how many ghosts are there 15 15 the <laughs> This is a lot of ghosts right here. This is actually oh. so much to deal with. Nice little drop coming in on the right side mm. once again. And it's going to not find anything. Great transfuses right there out of Jon Snow. But that will still, well, it will still eventually find something. But buys enough time for the Ultralisks to show up. And now, uh, Pick up I thought the I saw There were some Bungle. earlier for sure. Bungle oh, corrosive. Oh, nice. Is that going to kill? No. Oh, oh it is with the corruptors. Nice. Very uh, nicely done. The full mech transition right now for Vindicta. He's producing fours. He's now getting, uh, alongside the ghosts, of course, he's now getting um, cyclones as well. He doesn't yet have what? the uh, fancy headlines for uh, headlights for the cyclones. Um, but this is weird. This strays in the game. I mean, ghost, yeah. uh, ghost liberator, not uncommon late game, but uh, adding in a bunch of fours and, and, and cyclones. I mean... It's going to deal with the air army very, very well. But I'd be concerned about, like, a huge swell of ground units just overwhelming. Yeah, um, I, I don't mind My... the... Uh, this command center going to get taken out. And this ghost... Oh, it got spotted from... Where did the overseer... Okay, he does see it with the overseer. And he fumbles just to make sure. Uh, yeah, they, they make a, a real... The best sad, noise. Uh, pits of hell thing. Yeah. yeah, I think these cyclones were just a mistake. Um, and he's just like, okay, well, fine, bye. Um, yeah, that's a very confusing move. Hmm. Uh, no magfield accelerator, like hmm. you said, no headlights. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think they were meant to be Thors. Yeah, I do too. And now we see uh, there's giant, giant uh, Ultralists running in. They're going to do a pretty decent trade. The tanks aren't able to get those shots off. The ghosts stand in the back. They're very, very strong. Tanks are uh, currently hitting infestors and killing almost all of them. And that is a big, big throw thrown away army there from Jon Snow. Vindicta lost a lot too, but I feel like definitely he came out the stronger player in that. And in fact, yeah, he killed 8,000 worth of minerals and 4,500 worth of gas. Uh, that was a, a good, good defense there by Vindicta. Yeah, and a crucial part of that was that almost all the ghosts stayed ghosts alive. Survive. Only mm -hmm. four of them went down, and all of the expensive tech for uh, Jon Snow lo was lost. He lost the Infestors. He lost, I believe, the Vipers. He lost the Ultralisks. The only thing that was worth gas that stayed alive in that army was the Corruptors. And he's not going for a Broodlord transition. Nice. And in fact, Vindicta has skipped the uh, Liberators in response to that very, very early corruptor switch from Jon Snow. I, I really like this move out of Vindicta. Yeah, Vindicta's army is like 
terrifying right now. There are so many ghosts on the field. 20. There are as many ghosts as there are Marines. He's starting to get that big wall of static defense coming in, whereas our Zerg player has not been able to do that. This nuke going to come down, gets a bunch of lava, softens up the space. We do have a big fight going down right now, though. The Ultraist, once again, though, just look like they're charging into a slaughter. Yeah, that was a really, really expensive fight. And now Jon Snow has spent most of his bank. He's down in supply. Mm. Army value is Ooh. pretty significantly in favor of Vindicta. And now he's securing a high yield base. There we go. Finally, we're seeing the Broodlord transition coming on in. But I think it's too late. I think the ghost yeah. count is, is going to be high. a little bit too high. Uh, the uh, Thors, two of them, are actually going to do quite well against uh, his opponent's oh. units. Especially with that plus two... Uh, Vehicle plating. Oh, man. Come on. Aww. <laughs> Every part of me just praying, praying. A couple of lings look like they may be uh, sacrificed here to the um, the gods of plutonium. But uh, no, Nuke does not hit the money. Uh, this base has been nuked over and over, and now it dies. Some of the army was awfully close there. Another second and some infestors died. We do see the big siege units here. Those broodlords up in the air. The hyper late game. But look how many ghosts there are. Vindicta just emp EMP'd his own ghost by accident. Oh my god. What? Oh my god, that's actually so huge. That that actually he can't fight this army now. That was so many snipes he just EMP'd away from himself. Look at how low the energy is on so many of these ghosts. Now he still has a lot of snipes. Wow, he's got a lot of snipes available. Oh and the broodlord's gonna go away. What broodlords? Oh, actually. But, um yeah, as you said, the energy very low. Uh that trade ended up three ghosts going down, two broodlords going down. It is slightly, slightly favoured for um Vindicta. But it's uh, these trades are, are are not good at the moment. John Snow is starting to get a little bit of a bank again, but Vindicta is currently mining way more gas. Uh I guess gas at this point, not the biggest thing. These twenty marine drops are, uh or, or like eight marine drops are still finding damage this late in the game, which is very impressive. They are kind of dead supply, I would say, this late. He wants more ghosts, he wants more fours. He wants more tanks. Um, and the Broodlord's coming in once again. The tanks are very, very far forward here. But here come the ghosts. And uh, with the tank line as it is. Oh, nice dodge fungo. Yeah, that was nice. He, he actually cancelled the snipes so that the ghosts would not stay there. Oh, and a huge oh EMP gosh. coming in on uh, Infestors. Getting all but two of them completely drained. And now Vindicta, he's like, he smells blood in the water. He is going to go for it. Yeah, but the ghosts are so far away right now. I guess he's trying to bait a lot of this into the tank fire. Uh, Vindicta doesn't want to overextend and lose all of his ghosts. I mean, a few Banelings and this game ends. That a nice tank movement here onto the tower. Doesn't last for long. Ooh, hello. The tank somehow survives on what? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Um, it gets taken out on the on the tail end. Uh, Medivac's being remade here, and SCV even being made by Vindicta, because why not? Um, how many command centers is he on? He's got six orbitals, which is a good amount. Uh, he doesn't have any planetaries, right? Is that not wild to you? Oh, he's got one. 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 That is one. crazy. Oh, and here comes a big fight, though. We're going to see a flank coming in from Jon Snow, but the top of the army does get taken out very quickly. The ghosts are so far in the back, even with a big fungal growth on them. I don't think this is going to be enough. No. Vindic he is going to be able to hold here. Uh, another fungal growth coming down, but not taking out all of the Rude Lords. And GG is called Vindicta. Takes the defensive fight and holds, and he will go up 1-0 in this series. Bloody, bloody good game there, Steadfast. Very, very cool to see. Late game TVZ. We asked for it. We got it. And uh, with this, we will now move on to our second map of Force. Uh, yeah, that was good. I think late game armies were controlled better. I think the decision making as well was better by Vindicta in late game. Uh, his army composition was awesome. I love that he didn't go for a bunch of liberators, seeing all of the uh, corruptors, as you said, uh, and overall played that game very, very intelligently. Yeah, uh, honestly, if it wasn't for that uh, that one move where he sniped the Overseers with his Marines, uh, when he had those three high ground tanks trying to defend against the uh, the big 1-1 one -one Roach timing, mm. we may have been looking at a... Uh, that game may have ended at like the 9 or 10 minute mark or whatever time that was, because there, there was a really, really large Roach force. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and at the very least, I think that third base is denied for, like, several minutes. Like, longer than it was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I completely agree with you. It's, it's weird to think that it started with such a huge roach attack and didn't go that way in the end. Um, we will, of course, be moving to our next map. It's going to be Lightshade. So, uh, another, uh, another decently normal map here, I guess. Uh, what's your opinions on the way these guys have just played com coming into Lightshade? 
Uh, well, this is another map where you can go for a uh, a one one roach timing, but I don't know. After seeing how vindict, oh, hmm. I I kind of to play devil's advocate feel like Jon Snow can't let Vindicta go that late again because I do yeah. feel like when the game went that way, especially in those late game uh, armies, Jon Snow he he lost like every trade. Um, oh yeah. So maybe he has to look for a timing. I'm not too sure. Let's load into it, introduce our players, and we will see how it pans. Absolutely. Spawning down in the bottom right position of Lightshade. It is the Red Zerg player from Sidestorm Gaming. Give it up for Jon Snow. I don't want you know, to... He knows nothing. I don't know anything about that TV show. So top left <laughs> representing Alpha X. He is the blue Terran player currently leading the series. It's Vindicta. Windicta so far. Windicta coming in big. That's an awful big. joke. Jesus, Grant. Um, let's pretend that was never said. Okay. Uh, okay. Standard openings, no crazy early pools or anything like that here on Lightshade. Uh, all the buildings are at home for our Terran player. So, so far, everything is calm. Uh, yeah, that is actually pretty notable because Vindicta is a fan of going for your proxy two racks, your proxy three racks. It's 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 pretty... He, he's no stranger to going for something like that. So showing a little bit of respect to Jon Snow saying, yeah, you're probably going to scout around. I'm probably not going to be able to find anything. I'm just going to... I'm just going to play a little bit standard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Reaper expand most likely going to be what comes out of Vindicta here. We did see that. That's much more normal in this matchup. You don't see as many like marine openings. It's kind of wild. You don't need it as much. Um, there's no adepts coming straight away. Um, gas. Yep. 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 Everything is cool. Uh, hatch. Uh, gas pool. Yep. 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 Reaper. Yep. 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 I don't know. There's not a lot to talk about at this point, is there? Um, what is your favorite color of a horse? color of a horse yeah. well that's got to be chestnut brown you know like that's just yeah, you're the second person to answer that question like that today for me really <laughs> <laughs> i've been asking everyone obviously see i i went pure white like shadow facts from world of the rings uh -huh. you know? okay yeah Ooh, that's a second rex yes it is yes 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 it is and you talked about two on ones uh with a reactor coming down this is looking like that's what we're probably gonna see ebay uh tech lab should be coming down pretty shortly i think mm. so uh, it, ebay behind the mineral line i've been seeing a lot of this with uh, uh plus one you get uh stim plus one uh, and you hit really 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 hard towards the third base and try and snowball the game from there reaper coming in gonna get a bit of information for now factory is of course coming down it is a 2-1-1 not a 3-1-1 that's a quick roach warren though here from mr snow that it is and no ling speed so we <laughs> uh, just a big roach attack against a 2-1-1 where you're just trying to get a bunch of marines and uh a couple medivacs and get 60 marine two medivac drop mm. uh you know like seven eight nine roaches show up at your base that is a real bad time because it hits before those medivacs are yeah. even on the field and honestly this this could actually be a very very quick game for Jon Snow if uh, Vindicta cannot catch wind of this extremely early. Yeah, there's that stim pack starting up for our Terran player. The first roach. There we go. Six roaches in the production tab. Oh, getting the creep tumor. Very nice here for the Reaper. Always feel fantastic when you get that. Oh, he's a slippery boy. He's going to see it. Oh, that's... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did he see it? He didn't. He oh, did that's so not. big. But seeing oh. that there's no gas, can he figure out what this is, Steadfast? Uh, not until he sees those roaches pop, I don't think. But he sees the roaches okay. pop. Okay, roaches. that lets him know. And he should get double. Yeah, I would say double, even triple bunker at the natural. Yeah. Or even bunker on the low ground, bunker on the high ground. High ground. This uh, this yeah. bunker might be too late. Yeah, the first roaches are already stomping across the map with that little waddle they do. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Um, and, and there's really not that much out right now. We're looking at six roaches, uh -huh. 27 marines. There's a tank on the way, but it's not going to be here in time. Uh, I mean, SCVs are going to have to come off the line, I think. Yeah, they definitely will. And this bunker will many. just barely finish. It will finish just in time here. Yeah. And, well, this is a cool uh, response from Jon Snow. He's throwing mm. down three more gases. And he's going to be going it, into two base Muta behind Muta. Us. Yeah, I love it. I love uh, it. This is... I like this a lot. Uh, Vindicta also making a smart decision. And instead of building a reactor here on this factory... Yeah. Under the gun, he builds a tech lab, and it builds quite quickly, gets that siege tank. If this was a very dedicated all-in, 
he would be uh he would be in a much better position now john snow did drone out of this pretty much yeah. immediately he only built six, six. roaches mm. so cool. yeah he's actually ahead in economy by a fair bit right now he's up uh 12 workers and even mm. with mules that's uh that's a pretty big advantage yeah, but we do see the drop coming in. It is still only two hatchery as well, five minutes into the game. The third hatchery not even going down yet. Uh, as we said, it is two base muter. Sometimes you see, you know, the two and a half base muter, as I like to call it, with the third going down as the spire goes down, just about. But this is a fully com committed two base muter. There's going to be, uh, what, six, seven, eight muters straight away. Uh, there we go. This third base now going down, immediately going to get stopped. No scan. Those overlords are very out in the open. Uh, yeah, okay. it's uh, a, a nice job from Jon Snow. He does it forces it up into the meta back. Um, I've, I've always fancied calling that build three hatch muta myself. It's, uh, uh you know, I just, yeah, yeah. Just a big fan of, of the three hatch muta plays. I think it's a really strong way to play. Shout out to slowly falling in the chat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bit of an inside joke on that one. Yeah, uh, I get we it. Have a scan coming down and it doesn't see the spire. It is at the natural. He did see there was no third base. He saw that there were only six roaches still, not many lings on the field. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to figure it out from this. We haven't seen any auto, uh, any missile turrets go down just yet. So I'm guessing he probably hasn't quite clocked on to what he's playing against. Uh, Vindicta, okay, there we go. Yeah, he has, he has. He's adding those two missile turrets. He's got to know, right? I'm not... Yeah, there's no way. No, he's At the very least, he suspects strongly enough that he's yeah. like, I don't want to lose the game to this. Mm. And that is absolutely the right play right here. Uh, but we're going to be seeing Jon Snow going for an all-in off this. He is going to go for a bunch of uh, Mutaling Bane off of what is essentially a two-base economy mm. and just going to try and end the game. And he's actually going to potentially be able to take out all these Marines if Vindicta does not yeah. get into the mix immediately, which he will. But is he going to be able to escape? Yeah, I'm not sure if they can escape, but they can just do this. Unload here, pick off a muter or two, wait in, uh, for reinforcements to get here. All he needs to do is buy time. Actually, this is time to get pretty sketchy. All of these are going to go down. He's he's playing the terrain here, which I love. Uh, he's also distracting a bunch of the mutalists, which means they can't go and be part of this all-in. The bunker's still standing, not salvaging that. Could end up being the saving grace here of Vindicta. Army supply, 58 here for Jon Snow, 36 for Vindicta. He needs more units, and I, I mean, this drop is... I, I, it is saving the game right now for Vindicta because there's so much pressure that's not on him because they're trying to chase down these seven Marines. Yeah, this is actually quite a nuisance here. Uh, Jon Snow, he he was, oh no, not like this. Uh... Don't lose. He only loses one. That's actually okay. Um, he still could have pulled it back, so a little bit mm. unfortunate that he didn't do that. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I actually am okay with Jon Snow not coming in here since he saw that the third base was not yet landed. But if he is not going to go, like, right now, he needs to get double Evo. He needs to start mm -hmm. heading into the later stages of this game. Right now, he's, he's kind of hedging his bets a little bit, slowly droning up. He needs to be slamming that D button. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, we do see uh, plus one air weapons is finished here for the Mooters. Uh, they're going to be able to tear through these SCVs uh, and even maybe takes a couple of trays. Doesn't want to be losing them, though. Mooters are a unit that, that very much need to have that uh, large, large amount. So now we see the attack coming in. Bailing speed is not done. It's still like 20, 30 seconds away. There we go. We see the timer now. And that could end up not being a great decision here as the SCVs, a few of them do fall, but a, a lot stand strong. And uh, that trade didn't go incredibly well, I would say, for... For um, Jon Snow, Vindicta able to take the better of it. Yeah, dead even in minerals, but more gas lost here by Jon Snow. The double upgrades are not coming because only one has been started. Okay, there we go. I thought uh, for a second he might have queued him up on the same one. And now Vindicta's got a sensor tower, so he can play very safe uh, against his mutalists. He's getting drilling claws too for his uh, widow mines. And his 2 2 is already as far done as the 1 1 here of Jon Snow. Yeah, this is um, th this is why I said this was an all-in. Is mm. the even though Jon Snow has map control, he has a good mute account. He is in a good position. He denied his opponent's third base for a little bit. Uh, oh, okay. Well, this is actually really nice damage. And if he can get maybe those Evo chamber or sorry, uh, engineering base, base, that'll be fantastic. Mm. But the big problem is that two-two timing and drilling claws is amazingly efficient versus mutilating yeah. bane. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've we've all seen those magical, magical shots where you know thirty banelings disappear under the in the blink of an eye. So uh, I, I'm very scared right now for Jon Snow. We even have a four coming in, which means the uh, muters are not going to be able to take direct trades. Stim there, that's nice. Getting a stim here and there, wasting the medevac energy, of course, is, is cool. Um, but this is going to be very difficult. We see another CC going to go down outside of a natural, and uh, how many racks are we on? It feels like there's not a huge amount. There is only five here, so. Uh, not the biggest marine production in the world right now, but this four adds so much to this army. Yeah, it really does. It makes, uh, like you said, it makes engaging with mutas such a hassle. I really like that Jon Snow is taking down these rocks. Mm. Uh, I think I said it before during EU, yeah. but these are the most important rocks on Lightshade these days. Uh, oh, a couple of mutas. Oh. He just lose. Oh, he only lost one. But okay. still, that's that's not ideal. You don't want to lose any mutas if you can avoid it. And, well, he's thinking about picking a fight. The Banelings, oh, a little bit of a trap here, but who traps who as the oh. Widowmine? Actually, neither of them really got a, yeah. an amazing shot. I thought they were going to be massive, but they so were, you know, they hit the roaches. okay. Yeah, the Widowmine's actually connected on the roaches instead of the Banelings there, and although they were all together, the splash not quite big enough. Plus two melee starting up here for Jon Snow, but 2-2 two -two has just completed for our Terran player. That means there is a window of opportunity here, uh, and of course, there's no infestation pit yet. The good news is for Jon Snow, I guess, he has plus two air weapons moments away, and will be able to trade more efficiently if he is forced to with those muters, and his creep spread is bloody beautiful. Oh, my favorite thing in the universe! Yeah, it's looking really, really nice right now. It's pushed back across the map, and while Jon Snow hasn't gotten crippling damage with the Mutas, he's got picked off a few SCVs. He has maintained map control and kept Vindicta back for such a long time. And I was saying I'd love to see Jon Snow get really explosive with the drone count. About a minute, maybe a minute and a half ago, uh, yeah, about a minute ago, he pumped, pumped out an additional 14 drones, and now he's on 93 workers, mm -hmm. which is an incredible, incredible economy as Vindicta is just now landing his fourth. Like, this is so, so well done from Jon Snow from a position where it felt like he was in a, a pretty tight bind, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, I'm very surprised Vindicta, like, just never moved out even with 2-2. He is continuing to sit back, wait for 3-3, free -free, which is uh, pretty nice because the 3-3 free -free of our Zerg is quite far away still. Widowmind's defensively here, uh, probably capable of doing a lot of work. Oh my god, oh, that's yes, so gross. They didn't target. No, they did not. Meanwhile, there was a big, big attack on the left side that tried to take out the planetary. It just lifted. It just went into the air. Yeah, see That's all it needed to do. <laughs> Yeah, and now uh, Vindictor is actually up in supply, and, and a lot of the supply for Jon Snow is in production. He just produced like 80 lings to try and get back into this, but look at army supply. 115 to 81. Free free is halfway done. If this free free was done by now, I'd be very scared. Um, the army split off right now does mean Vindictor has to be a little careful. He doesn't get one of them caught. Uh, Sun Tzu said it was engaged a flank on the weakest side and never run into Widow Mines. I'm pretty sure that was his other quote. This four could end up going down. Oh, yeah, it gosh. will. Oh, the medevac picked it up and then they just instantly died. It still had half its health. Ouch. Uh, Jon Snow with a bit of misclick there, clicking on the supply depot. Uh, looks yeah. like a push on the bottom side is going to try and come in here and get some answering damage. But Jon Snow finds a lot of value here. He forces the command center away. Uh, mm. Going to pick off a few marauders, which is great because that's going to make his uh, hive tech transition a little better. Does Ooh, need bunker. to keep these mutas alive. Does not want to lose those. Well, engagement on creep on the bottom side. Not going to be able to clean up this army. And uh, Vindicta will find a kill on this fifth base. Jon Snow is, is up in supply by 30 right now. But uh, in terms of army the dead even this base so it can't it, it can't go down it's such an important command center there's very very few marines right now to push these mutt mutts back in terms of uh how that went 16 mutants have gone down in this game these are very overstim marines though one baneling would just absolutely decimate them they are going to be able to get out before uh the banelings arrive here mutas trying to close in on this location uh, unfortunately the unload going to come in uh more mutas dying here that's a lot of dead mutalists uh, I think he uh, only actually lost, like, one like two <laughs> right there. Yeah, you're right. Two or three, maybe. Um, but the big story right here is he picked mm -hmm. off plus three melee. Mm -hmm. That is a really, really nice find for uh, Vindicta here. Vindicta kind of needs a, a little bit of time to restabilize, reestablish yeah. his economy. Uh, Jon Snow, uh, he doesn't have a sixth base. Oh, oh, Widowmine drop coming in here. Wow. Like it. I didn't Love even it. see that, but that was just all coincidental. I was just looking on at that base.
That was not good multitasking. I want to make that clear, guys. That no, was no, no, no. It was, it was, me was, being lucky. Yeah, right, okay. As, as a budding emerging caster, you take credit for everything. Like, even this. Like, you did that. Oh, oh. Um, oh my god. Uh, the rest of the boys that are coming in here from our Zerg player, he doesn't have a lot of Bailings left. And this is a lot of Marines. Target fire from Vindicta. Very, very good. The base will hold on. And a lot was thrown at that base to try and kill it. So, uh, a nice save there from Vindicta. He's starting to stabilize that bit more. As you said, he needs a few more SCVs, in my opinion, as he is down 25. But uh, saving that base is very, very important. By the way, this battle, according to the battle report, has been lasting for three minutes. That's three minutes wild. straight of just Six fighting seconds. and skirmishing because they have continued to just lose and throw and and punch each other right in the goddamn face. <laughs> and, well, look at this. Ooh, eight ultras on the way. Eight of them. There's only that six marauders. Not... One tank, no and... liberators. The mines are barely okay. Ugh. There's nothing that deals with ultras. No. Nothing. No ghosts. Nope. Yeah, and like you said, no liberators, barely any marauders. This, this is this is going to be a brutal, brutal uh, tech switch to deal with. And we will see the mutas trying to come back into the main base. They are going to take out a couple turrets, but at least two mutas will go down here. And, well, they will actually win the fight against these marines. Mm. Is Actually, they, they win pretty well. Yeah. yeah four four mutas go down. Oh, but that's... Oh, oh gosh. Oh, they didn't win that one, though. They get six. Yeah. Um, and, and, I mean, this non, non-stop non action here. Both of these players just trading blows. Oh, the Widowmark. Bonk. Dunk nice. is right, right there. And uh, we're seeing Corruptors coming out of Jon Snow here. Looks like he is oh. really trying to... Oh, man, these mutas are trapped. They're stuck, uh, yeah. Uh, Recall. Oh, wait. oh, wow. Re Recall, yeah. That's what I would do. <laughs> Uh, but um, this is buying time for the for more and more ultralists. We've got Infestors coming. You can see Anabolic Synthesis is about to finish. A huge, huge, oh. huge connection of Banelings there. And the ultralists chomp away as well to clean that drop up. And now Vindicta needs to sort this out. He does have Liberators on the way. He's trying to make a few Marauders. He's making a bunch of Command Centers too. So he can uh, planetary them up most likely. Or get a load or start replacing SCVs even. Uh, I mean, he really needs a uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, fifth, fifth base, base yeah. right? Like it's been a long yes. time without it. He cannot afford ghost tech without it, and no. that is uh, that is really what he needs desperately right now. He is building a ghost academy. Oh, huge Widowmine shot, clearing out a lot of lanes right there, but here come the Ultras, and there are so, so many. many of them. Jon Snow he is maxed out. He's got a, a big army supply, uh, value lead in gas specifically. Well, yeah. there are a lot of painlings. Yeah. He had. No, he still does. Uh, right now, the, there's a lot of Marines on the field, and they're, although they're always strong, obviously, they are kind of losing value against this mass Ultralisk, mass Baneling composition. The Mutalisks, or shall we say Mutalisk, they've been wiped out at this point, and I don't think Jon Snow's too mad about it, because look at his bank! Like, he's he's confidently banked a lot of minerals, he's able to remax his lava count, is at 29, so he can just throw out 60 Lings straight away, and they are uh, three free Lings, plus two plus three Lings, of course, that upgrade was cancelled earlier. Um, and or, or move into Broodlords when the time is appropriate. Oh, catching some investors though, not bad. Oh. Yeah, that's a really, really big find right there. Meanwhile, drop on the bottom side does run into Ultralisk, but Vindicta with the multitasking will so well. and get into the uh, main base. Yeah, he is playing such a fantastic game from a position of disadvantage. I gotta say, I really need to see Jon Snow kind of uh, tech into a more end game composition. Mm. Ultras. This is like watching me play. Like, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to use Vipers. I'm bad at it. Um, I get that. But Jon Snow, he is quite good at it. He, he can definitely use it. And if his opponent gets up to Ghost, which now five, five. Are, are in production at a time. Yeah. If Blake he gets well. up to Ghost, we may very well see a repeat of game number one. Yeah, it's highly, highly possible. I agree with you. Vindicta uh, is, is going to be able to secure at least one base here. He's going to try and take two at the same time. Uh, and as long as one of them gets off, he'll be very confident because he's going to mule the ever-loving heck out of that uh, north base at 12 o'clock, uh, get a whole, whole bunch of money in. Now, Jon Snow still has that very healthy bank, and the creep spread is still extremely good. But once nukes come into play, and there's already two of those bad boys being researched, this, this could be the repeat of map one. Absolutely. Ghosts are out. The Ultralisks are going to try and shove on through here. They I don't think dying. he's every single Ultralisk except for the two that stay alive. But that was a lot of losses. Oh, he might even lose that one to a single Marauder. Get no, not him, gonna... boy! Get him, get him, boy. 
and, and that basin and off has now been held onto. Uh, Vindicta has uh, just been able to take out a lot of the bank, specifically the lava bank here. There's only three lava on the field right now. They're going to regen, of course, over time. But that means if another big fight were to come in, remaxing for Jon Snow would be hard. He's even supply blocked. Um, uh, been forced to make a bunch of overlords here. Uh, didn't make like 80 extra like I would. Uh, but the ghost count now, we're already looking at nine. There are and there's another one being produced. More Marauders coming in, which obviously Marines and Marauders at this point, not the best units, but uh, Vindicta is very broke. Uh, yeah, Vindicta actually really, really needs medevacs more than anything oh. right now. His composition is great, but he has nothing to heal. Okay, new, I was going to say that would have been so that? sick, uh, but it will get dodged. Will, you know, clear Please. out uh, uh, a couple of larva and a, a very sad Zergling that popped out here. <laughs> nice uh, defense right here from... Mm. Uh, Vindicta, he's going to hold this base, kills off an Ultralisk, and now he's going to move out with another nuke. Oh, and, and if he, if this nuke goes off, he's going to kill all the static defense and that hatchery. Yeah, it's, it's a big uh, a big base to lose as well. Right now, Jon Snow needs to hold on to all these bases, so Vindicta can't have them, basically. Oh, I love it. I love the upgraded bunkers. That's a very dead base there. Uh, and also, all the creep from the area will be pushed back. It's going to allow Jon Snow... Uh, sorry, allow Vindicta to move forward a little bit, maybe get the high ground, Anakin. Uh, these ghosts are, are so frustrating to deal with, and I must say, Vindicta plays it extraordinarily well. We should see another nuke coming down shortly. Here we go on all the static defense. Yeah, and uh, I think that's close enough to the center that if he, uh, if that lands, he will oh kill over these lings. They're cracklings, that's so and good. they are going to deny that new. So good. Oh, this is nice. Uh, run by here going to get on top of some of the production, most likely. There's not too many units that can come back and deal with this. Not a lot of reinforcements popping out as well that aren't ghosts. And if he can catch a ghost or two on its way out, that'd be nice. He's actually going to work away at the Ghost Academy. That Ghost Academy, very vulnerable right now. He's, he's not going to save it. Okay, yeah, he will. Um, finally, the Marines will come in and keep that safe. It almost blocked it. Oh, God. Building UI, or AI? AI. Uh, unit AI when interacting with buildings? Man, this is starting to feel like a campaign mission right now, like yeah. watching this. And seeing the Neo Steel bunkers. Yeah. Uh, I've not seen the campaign. Like, I don't know what you're Hundred lings at a time. Mass Marauder armies as well. That's so many Banelings tasteless. 30 on the field right now. Uh, there's only two nukes, uh, two more Ghost Academies being produced so we can really start pumping them out. There's a great Aspire. It's coming in once again, I think, a little too late considering the bank. Like, he could have made this five minutes ago. Uh, he has yeah. the money and it's in the back then. It's ready, you know, uh, for a big tech switch should one fight go a weird way. Uh, a few units going to go down here. That's a lot of, lot of Zerg. They are, uh, right now, Jon Snow is keeping his army, like, all together instead of splitting it up to deal with all of his runbys. Ghost runbys is kind of a weird thing to say, but that's exactly what they kind of are. Um, I mean, this base is definitely dead, but this one uh, is going to take some damage, and they're just going to trade here. A lot of dead SCVs, though. Like, a lot. Uh, yeah, 24 SCVs going down is actually gigantic. Mm. And Vindicta may choose not to re... Okay, he is rebuilding them, but I wouldn't have hated the decision to just max out on one super army and, and just go. go. Yeah. And, like, you know, like 150 supply yeah. of just pure, pure power. Yeah, I mean, he's not really that far off there. Only 53 workers. He started to make some and then decided to just get a <laughs> shed load more ghosts instead. These ghosts are the bane of Jon Snow's existence. They have been played so well. He's getting better at dealing with them. Less of these nukes are connecting than in game one. But, uh, I mean, it's still just constant, constant threat. And and it's hard to know. Like, even this position, this is a, a five gas saturated. Oh, he finds it. How do you find that when you've got this many bases? I do not get it. Is this ghost going to kill himself? Yes. Oh, almost. Oh, boy. <laughs> Commit Sudoku. <laughs> uh, it just ends up, you know, giving himself a bad microwave burn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going to see <laughs> another nuke coming down. Ooh, uh, decent little widow mine shots. Mm. Nuke. Oh, this, this one is going to land, and the drones are not being pulled. Oh, another massive nuke. Yeah, 14 Wind drones is what strikes again. I feel like Vindicta needed to, because he was down a lot. Now, all of a sudden, I mean... Jon Snow's bank is still humongous. Uh, now it's 7k, 4k. He's able to remax from pretty much any army he wants. Uh, more nukes coming down, killing the static D here. But uh, oh, some nice fungals catching a bunch of ghosts actually here steadfast. And uh, we do see the army starting to charge forward. Uh, on the retreat, though, is when ghosts are most scary. My uh, Ultralisk, Space Cow. Oh, uh, oh my god, I'm now weird. Well, you see it right there. They take down one of the Ultras. Yeah, oh, you don't want to lose all those uh, Marauders, though. That's no. a lot of... 
a lot of strong anti ultra supply to just uh lose, just lose right there. And well, we are gonna see this ghost. It is still alive. Run. And it gets out of range of the spore. Oh, the, oh, over here. Uh, it is oh important gosh. to note, by the way, that Vindicta has set his ghosts to hold fire, so they will not auto attack. Yes. Uh, oh, he's looking. He's hunting, and he finds him. Oh, but will it be too late? No, not quite. Nah, not even close. Actually, not even close. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate that, though. I looked the, the dot, and I only saw the center, and I was like, oh, they're the same size, and then my the brain The circle like, just started. It's like, no, it's, actually, it's like six seconds away. It's not yeah. even, not, uh, not even a little close. Some brood lords coming in right now. It is only going to be uh, Trez, uh, Jon Snow. Okay, there we go. Now going up to eight brood lords, which is a, a perfect amount here. Uh, gonna have those uh, big boys on the field very, very shortly. A couple more ultralists will go down. Some nice snipes there. These infestors, if they get caught out of position, are gonna be really, really, really terrifying. SCVs are long distance mining from a base that isn't owned by Vindicta, which I respect. Um, they are some brave, brave boys behind enemy lines. Uh, but this is still a very scrappy game. That's a lot of dead ultras. Oh god, this was not the attack, Jon Snow. He just lost so much supply for so little game. Jesus. He took out, what? Three times. Oh, five, he took out not enough. Yeah. And that was like three times efficiency yeah. for uh, Vindicta. And now he secures this base as well. And look at the bank tower, Jon Snow. He has no gas anymore. He had 4k a few moments ago. Oh god. This, this is... is Are we seeing game one again? It it basically is, except that Jon Snow was even in a much, much better spot than game one. Oh the EMP oh. is coming out Frungle, but not enough. Oh a bunch of snipes clear out all the corruptors. Holy crap! How is he doing about? this? I, I uh, honestly don't know, is. and now Infest is falling down to Snipes as well, and right now the base at the top is also being dealt with, uh, it looks like the planetary will uh, hold for a while, it will eventually fall down, we have a nuke being put in a forward location, it does look like our Terran player is going to retreat down at the south side, this base finally falls down, but I mean those Broodlords needed to be in the fight, oh imagine if that Ultralisk got nuked. Uh, this base now, gonna get nuked once again, that's a couple of lava, that's the base softened up, that's some creep tumors dead. SCV's going down is frustrating, but Vindicta is actually, he has more money, he has more miners even than Jon Snow. And he has this base down in the south now, meaning he's gonna start mining more efficiently for the first time in what feels like 15 minutes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, this is crazy. Six hatcheries have died this game. <laughs> And they have pretty much all been critical mining bases. Like, it's not like he, you know, lost an eighth base. Like, he has lost no. a sixth base when, yeah. he has, like, Jon Snow yeah. is absolutely broke. Yes, completely. And it's crazy. Like, I harped on about his his uh, 7K, 4K bank, what feels like one minute ago, and it's gonzos. I mean, you can run by here, sure, maybe get a Ghost Academy, get some depot supply block, but uh, I, I can't see this doing a huge amount of damage, to be honest. Vikings coming in to deal with the Broodlords. Uh, there are no mech upgrades, though, so those are kind of uh, oh. shitty Vikings. Um, flanking, flanking EMP just knocked oh. out three Infestor's energy. That's so big. Energy at this point in the game, for those of you maybe a little newer to these late game, energy is like one of the most important resources. It's so big because you can't fight without it, and uh, it's absolutely crucial to you winning fights, but this is a big, big Zerg army. Who's winning? Vindicta's going to hold. He's got so many ghosts behind this in the backfield. Oh. oh my god, the snipes kill everything. And Jon Snow, he is just losing out on everything. The How? planetary fortress holds. The broodlords get shoved away. And now there is How? nothing to cover them. They have to disengage. I cannot believe that just happened. I really thought he was dead. Like, I saw the Zerg coming in. I was like, oh, the ghosts are going to get hit by two Banelings. GG, well played. We go to map three, and I didn't go to bed till five in the morning. But that's not going to be the case here. Now we can see... Uh, the, the ghosts continue to stand strong. How many ghosts have died in this game? 25. Quite a bit, but there's still 11 left. And they're still being produced. And Vindicta is mining like a fair bit more right now. You can see by those two or one, one and a half, two blue arrows, that he is mining more efficiently than his opponent. And if he can get snipes coming in here, he's going to kill these infestors. Oh my god, there's only one infestor left with this army. Like another, another couple will at rally in. Look at the battle report. Oh no, it disappeared. No. It was up at seven and a half minutes. It was up at seven and a half minutes, wow. all, all considered by that algorithm to be one continuous battle. Oh, that amazing. is absolutely bonker. Both players are on scraps mm. of economy. Neither of them really mining from more than... Uh, Six? More than neither of them is even mining from a full base. Yeah, it's just Nicto mining off of yeah. this one.
And he's oversaturated quite massively. The nuke gonna come in here. Try and catch the army. Oh my god, there's no way. Okay, stack defense sees it. They are gonna move back. That's a good response here from uh, Jon Snow. He can't be affording to lose that because he cannot replace it. This overseer somehow survives, but I mean, it's gonna need to see a, a, a doctor at some point because it's definitely gonna have some after effects. And now it yeah, dies. I, Survives a nuke, gets killed by some pilots. Mm, big EM, uh, big one. There's just not that much... There's no lings here to distract the ghosts and to force them to micro. I, th yeah. Th this is just... This is just Jon Snow not looking comfortable in the super late game. Yeah. Uh, no vipers have been in here. He hasn't Zero. been... Uh, he hasn't been building enough static defense. This is the most successful mm. he's been, and it's been with the usage of three spore crawlers. And he's down 50 and, supplies still. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It's oh. too late. It's too late, and now we're going to see... Okay, we are going to see an attempt to break one last work. time from Jon Snow, but the SCV is fully repairing this planetary. It has got 62 kills, and it's it is insane. going to hold what's in 63. All wow. the Brutalers are back. plate is called and Vindicta is going to crush through and will take 